I believe that's everything, folks, and uh, we're just uh, thrilled that you were here for worship. Let's start with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you for the privilege of worshiping you today. May our humble offerings of, of words and music be acceptable in your sight, and may you change us to be more like you in the next hour. Amen. We're going to sing There is Power in the Blood. It's on page 283 of your hymnal. It should be on the screen as well. Sing all four verses. church family how's everybody doing well I have tried my hardest to condense this down to two hours so <laughs> I don't know how it's gonna go but <laughs> I'm kidding kind of um, happy Sabbath it's good to see you all got a lot of visitors and guests here and it is wonderful to be with you today um, you know, I'm going to get my chance today to redeem myself and all those moments that my husband has used me as a sermon illustration. I get to do that today. <laughs> I, I'm, I probably won't, but if something good comes to my mind during the message, I'm going to just stop mid chat and say, i got to tell you about something. But right now, I can't. He sent me a whole lot of notes. I was really trying to concentrate. They do not pay preachers enough. That's all I've got to say. Because 
it takes a lot of time and concentration. And any of you know my little crazy world this week. I've had a lot of distractions. It's been kind of crazy. And I'm just actually glad I'm here with you. But um, I was trying to concentrate and work on my notes. And he keeps coming in like every 15 minutes. Hey, you might want to use this for your sermon. You want this? And these are all his notes. And, and I went, I'm okay, thanks. But there's some really good stuff in here. And I was like, I'm sure. Thank you, honey, very much. 15 minutes like, hey, I found something. And, and then he sent me a text. Hey, you need to use this. I'm like, he just wanted to be here with you so bad, so he tried to insert a few notes. I did use one. I have to, I, <laughs> I have to admit, it was good. So I, I took it. So anyway, anyway. I would love if we could just have one more prayer because I want to make sure that um, you don't hear me speaking today, but that you hear, you hear the Lord speaking to your heart. So just join me for a moment. Dear Heavenly Father, it is such a privilege to speak for you. I just pray that our hearts are open, that the words that I say will be words that we've been longing and needing to hear all week, maybe all of our life. And I just pray for your Holy Spirit to be present with us as we worship you today. In Jesus' name, amen. So, um, let me get my self, I think we're good up there. I'm good to keep going here. We had a little trouble, technical trouble, but I think we're getting it together. Um, how many of you, let me make sure I'm going in the right direction. There we go, perfect. Does anybody know what this game is? My husband's never heard of the game, but that's not surprising. Um, how many of you have actually heard of Words with Friends? Just curious. Most of you. How many of you play the game currently, if you're willing to admit it? One, thank you, Teresa, for your honesty. <laughs> One person? Two. Three, four. Okay, we're starting to loosen up now. <laughs> I'm not going to call you out by name. So, she plays words with friends. I've personally never played the game, but I know about the game. Um, I think it's been around since 2009 is what the internet said. Could anyone testify to that? Does that sound accurate? 2009, this game is being played. Uh, I really have no idea how it even works, but I know it's about words, that's for sure. Um, 2009, and it's still going strong according to the internet, and apparently there's several of you who are connected with it, so uh, I think this is a, a viable game. However, I, I did a little research to find out a little bit about Words with Friends. Um, I found out that there are 50, uh, that didn't get a word on there. Anyway, there are 57 million, that, there's a missing word up there, uh, <laughs> no pun intended, 57 million matches at any moment. No one's playing right now, are they, while the message is going, <laughs> I'm just checking. <laughs> um, that's a lot of matches. That's going on constantly. I was kind of shocked. Another internet resource cited that it's technically a, now that you've admitted that you play the game, that it's a dating app. Has anyone ever heard that before? I mean, really? I mean, things have changed a lot since I was dating. I don't, I don't know, but that's what the Internet said, and if it's on the Internet, it's true, right? <laughs> One thing I found the most interesting, though, about the game, there's a couple of rules, and someone that does play tell me if this is correct information. Uh, these are things you cannot uh, use. These are not allowed, supposedly. And I, I know that you can cheat on this game, apparently, but I know none of you would do that. Um, you cannot use proper nouns, words that are capitalized. Uh, abbreviations, prefixes, and suffixes standing alone cannot be used. Words requiring hyphens or apostrophes are not allowed either. Is that correct, Teresa? All right. But... The one interesting rule that caught my attention about words with friends is that you cannot use derogatory words or racial slurs. Is that correct? I thought that was pretty interesting. I find it extremely interesting that a game that millions, and I do mean millions of people, I mean the matches that occur at any moment, 57 million, that's greater than the population of Spain. That's a lot of people. But 
there are people all over the world playing it all hours of the day, coming up with words, tons of words. They're having to think constantly because they can get bigger points, and I think you can even get prizes now with this game. So it's a pretty big deal. But constantly they are thinking about what? Words. Words, 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 all the time. And they must be careful to choose them so they don't violate the rules. So what about us? What, kind of, what about our words? What about the words that we are using and speaking? Are we breaking rules with our words? Are we carefully selecting our words before we speak them and before they leave our lips? Are we intentionally thinking about what we're going to say? Because if you were playing this game, you have to be pretty quick. I mean, it's a pretty back and forth quick game from what I understand. So you've got to be thinking and you've got to be careful of what you say. <coughs> Whoops, I didn't do what James told me to do. I'm sorry. There we go. Listen to these lyrics. You may recognize them. Some of you may not. This was from a song made popular several years ago. They've made me feel like a prisoner. They've made me feel set free. They've made me feel like a criminal. Made me feel like a king. They've lifted my heart to places I've never been. And they've dragged me down back to where I began. Words can build you up. What's the next sentence? Words can break you down. You know the song. Start a fire in your heart or put it out. Let my words be life. Let my words be truth. I don't want to say a word unless it points the world back to you. It goes on. You can heal the heartache. Speak over the fear. God, your voice is the only thing we need to hear. Words can build us up, words can break us down, start a fire in our hearts, or put it out. Let my words be life. Any words of wisdom from the word of God come to your mind right now that reference maybe the words that we are speaking? Um, as pictured in the slide, we, we say a lot of words and they do a lot of things, but I love this verse from Ephesians four twenty nine. I'm sorry, Proverbs 16, 24 says, um, Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Sounds like something we need. What about Ephesians 4, 29? I can't read it from my screen, and you probably can't either, because that is very small. Ephesians 4, 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Anybody want to hear a little word of grace in their life today? Be built up, encourage. Have you ever been around someone whose words just, I mean, grate on your very nerve? Anybody willing to admit that? You just, you see them coming and you turn the other way. Whoops, my buggy needs to go down the other aisle. I was actually in Walmart yesterday. Can't imagine that. James, trying to get ready for Oshkosh. Lots of people are in there. I was um, minding my own business and uh, came up on a lady whom I know. I'm going to clarify, she is not a church member, so don't look around and go, I wonder if it was her. <laughs> She's somebody's church member, but she is not ours. And she was not happy at all. And it took me one second to know she was not happy. And she, just, I'm thinking, I didn't want, I, I didn't get my buggy around the corner fast enough. I didn't even really know her that well. I'd seen her around, but she was very unhappy. And everything that came out of her mouth was negative. Nothing good to say, complaining. And I went, Wow, I wonder if I could invite her to church tomorrow and <laughs> be part of the sermon. I don't know. It was, it was pretty rough. And I just thought, wow, how do I, you know, anyway, I just kind of ended the conversation and said, hey, see you around, you know. But I, I was thinking about that a lot. Um, you know, I want to stop right here because I forgot to do something really important. I forgot to humiliate 
at least two of my children that are in the room, so I cannot do this without humiliating them. I mean, I'm sorry, it should be dad, but you guys are going to have to. When the boys were young, I don't remember how, um, what their age was. Um, y'all were very little. Reese was probably five, so stair step them on up. We decided, um, we were trying to start, you know, um, more character building stories in our home and devotions and stuff. And so I decided that we needed to have an object lesson. Because if you've got four boys in the house, sometimes their words don't <laughs> always, you know, they get upset with each other and they say things. <laughs> but they, then they love each other and it's all over. So I thought we'll have an object lesson. Do y'all remember what the object lesson was about words? Do you? It obviously did not impact you very well. <laughs> You might remember it as I explain it. I handed them each a paper plate, and they just kind of looked at me, and then I gave them each their own tube of what? Toothpaste. Toothpaste. you remember it now? I don't. We're going to have to redo this. <laughs> We're going to redo this one very soon. Um, anyway, they got their toothpaste, and I said, okay, you can do anything you want with the toothpaste. I mean, you can do whatever you want. Here's your plate. Have fun with it. And they looked at me very skeptically, and so, Farron, the oldest, and Tyler, they were very conservative with their toothpaste. They just made a few little dots on their plate, and they said they were done. But Brooks and Reese <laughs> squeezed every bit of their toothpaste out on that plate. I mean, they were having fun. I said, that was great. Y'all did a great job. I said, now let me go get something for you. And I went and got a little plastic knife. And I said, now you've got to put all of your toothpaste back in your tube. <laughs> well, Farron and Tyler were very happy, but Brooks and Reese were like, what? I said, yep, you got to do it. And so I let them fumble at it for a little while. And they were trying. Have you ever tried to put toothpaste back in a tube? Has anyone ever done that? Christine's like, yeah, she's like, maybe say, it's very difficult. It doesn't work. My object lesson was about the words that we speak. They fly out so easily. We just let them go, let them rip. <coughs> but try to take them back is like trying to put toothpaste back into the tube. It doesn't work so well. You just can't, once they've escaped your lips, you can't even chase them and bring them back. You can say you're sorry and you can do all those things or ask for forgiveness and those are all good things, but you just can't take them back. So I wanted to make sure I... Got that out and humiliated y'all for today, so that's good to go. No. So, got a question for you. Can we use our words to hurt? Yes or no? Yes. We can. We do. Can we use our words to be negative? Yes or no? Yes. Can we use our words to gossip? Yes. Can we use our words to complain? <coughs> yeah, we do that. What would happen, what could possibly happen if we stepped out into this very negative, very cynical world that we live in, where sadly people actually enjoy gossip and even bad news, it's sad to say. But what if we would become generous with our words? I mean, really generous, very intentional about our words, and use them to bring life into the people's lives that we're around constantly. Can you imagine it now? Replacing words that hurt is, and in, replace them with words that heal, wouldn't that be impactful? Wouldn't that be revolutionary? What if we use words to build up instead of using words to break down or make people feel broken? What about finding words that help a person feel better about themselves instead of them feeling frustrated and feel like a failure all the time? You're never going to amount to anything. You might as well give up. How would that make you feel? Oh, well, I, might, I guess I can't do it. I might as well not even try. But what if we said, you can do this, and I'm going to help you. We can work together. I'll be your partner. Wouldn't that make you feel better if you were struggling with life and something? I know it would me. Are words important, yes or no? <laughs> Absolutely. Let's look at another promise from Matthew 4, 4. He answered and he said, it, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every what? <coughs> every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Words are so important that actually there have been hundreds of songs written about words. I, I tried to do 
an exhaustive search on it, and I, like, I really, like, after, I even looked at, like, over two to three hundred titles of songs that have been written about words. I'm not going to list them all. You probably can be thinking of some right now. Songs that have word or words in the title. Words of life, more than words, lost for words, words can't describe. Do I have to say the words? Every word, famous last words, thy word, if I had the words, in other words, word of God speak, mark my words, these are the words I would say, spoken word, and sorry seems to be the hardest word, and yes, that's the name of the song. The list goes on and on and on. There are multiple singers and multiple genres of music that have included words. There's spiritual songs. There's rock and roll songs. Tons of songs about words. A lot of people are focusing on words. And when we choose to focus on speaking words, giving them generously, wholesome, uplifting words, it changes our life and it changes others too. If we choose that as our goal, day in and day out, our negative mindsets and our habits would melt away. Cussing might would stop. Why? Because it doesn't fit into who you really want to be, or even better, who God wants you to be. Sarcasm would slow. Why? Because you can't imagine hurting someone else with your words, even if it was un unintentional. Inappropriate jokes may still come into your mind, but not so much out of your mouth. Because when we put God's word in diligently and routinely, these things will fall away. If it is our desire, God will make us new again in every aspect of the word. And we can be intentional and generous with our words to ourselves and to others. Because sometimes we don't talk so nicely to ourselves, do we? Have you ever heard this phrase, hurt people? Finish it for me. Hurt people, hurt people. And sometimes we're not so kind to ourselves with the words we say. But when we spend time in God's word through study and prayer and we get to know Jesus, that can change completely. Anybody recognize this? Anyone ever watch the show Friends? <laughs> say a few smiles. Um, you may be too young or too old for it or right in the middle. But the show ran for 10 years. I think it ran from 94 to 2004. Um, interesting, if you've ever looked up the background behind the story, it, it was actually quite intriguing. But they were portrayed as BFFs, best friends forever. They, I mean, they had a great little thing going. But in reality, um, they were, behind the scenes, they were really kind of a mess. And, and many of them have done so-so, but if you look at each of the characters, they've had some real struggles and trials. Matter of fact, even, I think it was, um, I don't know their names very well right now, but um, the one in the middle, what's her name? Jennifer, Jennifer yeah, couldn't think of it. Uh, when she got married, she didn't even invite, she did not even invite over half of the cast to her wedding. Wouldn't you think if they were best friends and had a great time that she would have invited them all? But she didn't. Reality was, um, they looked good doing it, but it wasn't real. However, um, I think in the beginning it didn't set out that way. I thought it was kind of interesting as I looked at, um, it's funny how you say things all the time and you don't think about it. That's another thing with words. We kind of take them for granted. I had forgot the words to their theme song. It said, so no one told you life was going to be this way. Your job's a joke, you're broke, and your love life is DOA. It's like you're always stuck in second gear. When it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year, they said, I'll be there for you. So even though they had trials and all those things, they were trying to pull it together and be really good friends. But like I said, reality was there were struggles, and there's struggles with us as well. But there is a friendship, and there is a relationship that is not fake. It's for real. And it's vital if we want victory in our life. Jesus is our best friend. 
He can be our best friend. If he's not your best friend, he can be your best friend without a doubt. John 15, 15 says, I have called you what? Jesus? Call us friends? That is amazing to me. Once you get to know him, like I said, after spending time with him and study and prayer, you will be overjoyed to call Jesus your friends. He says, no longer do I call you servants. For a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. This is a pretty high compliment that Jesus would consider us his friends. And the same can be said of us when we join the body of Christ, the church. We're no longer servants. We're all friends here, aren't we? Amen. Jesus' ministry captured what it means to be friends. Here's some words that Jesus has said himself to others. He told Zacchaeus, I must stay at your house in Luke 19.3. He asked the woman at Jacob's well for what? A drink. Give me a drink in John 4, 7. In Luke 23, 43, he told the thief on the cross, he says, you will be with me in paradise. If you've ever wanted to something to study, something for different, just get out some paper and write down all the words that Jesus spoke. I mean, it'd be a great devotional to just each day. And then ask yourself, what does that mean to me? Jesus, I want to be your friend. And look at the words. My Bible is, has his words in red. And write that down and internalize that. It will change your life. So now that we are friends with Jesus, it's our responsibility to invite others to join this fellowship. Friends care for each other. They look out for each other. They believe the best about each other. There is no human institution there's no other human institu institution that can match the companionship that's found in a church. Does it have trials? Yes. Do we have struggles sometimes as a body of believers? Yes, we do. But truly, there is something very special that no other, no other has. As we live for Christ, our friendship will, with him, will be reflected in our friendship, each with each other, by the words that we speak. All right, here's my husband's assignment he gave me. It is a good one, though. I don't know if you can read that or not, but in Jerusalem, where the deepest prejudice existed, now I'm just going to stop right there for a second. Do we have deep prejudices in 2019? Do we have them in the church? We do. In Jerusalem, where the deepest prejudice existed and where the most confused ideas prevailed in regard to him who had been crucified as a malefactor, the disciples continued to speak with boldness the words of what? Life. Setting before the Jews the work and mission of Christ, his crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension, Priests and rulers heard with amazement the clear, bold testimony of the apostles. The power of the risen Savior had indeed fallen on the disciples, and their work was accompanied by signs and miracles that daily increased the number of believers. And that's from Acts of Apostles. It's powerful. And that wasn't just for them. It's for us. We need to speak life. We need to talk faith. We need to encourage and build up everyone that we can. We may not get another chance. In closing, are you willing to be brave and be different in a world that uses words to hurt instead of words to heal and use them often, not just one time? Make a habit of it. Cultivate that. Pray that God will help you with your words. If it's something you struggle with, he can help you. Are you willing to give those words of life that are found in Scripture to as many people as you can? When we speak life and talk faith, we will then have real words with real friends, especially our very best friend, Jesus. I want to close with a song this morning. Um, I'm sure you've heard it. And... Um,
it's one of my favorite songs. It's called I'm a Friend of God. And I want you, as you listen to the song, visualize Jesus as your friend. Visualize his words that he has given us. Use them to speak life. I have a really close friend. Uh, his name is Jim Hammer. And he's the prayer um, director up in the New York Conference. He wrote a book on victory over a critical spirit. Has anyone ever read it or heard of it? It's powerful. And the church he was attending in New York, words were flying way too loosely between members. Matter of fact, we call it friendly fire, don't we, sometimes? But the, those words were hurting, and they were damaging, and they were tearing down the church. And so Jim and some of the others got together, and they began to pray. And he says, what are we going to do? Because we've got people leaving, going to this church, people going to that church. Things are just really getting out of hand. And he says, we need to declare a moratorium that we're not going to talk like this anymore. They wrote up a little contract for each member. Might have been a little overkill. But they said, and it was, it, was very, it, was, it was very well written, and they said, let's make a commitment that the next time I walk up to someone and if you start to say something, that, that person will hold you accountable and say, we're not going to do that here. We're going to uplift each other here. We're going to bless each other with our words instead of batter people with our words. The whole environment of their church changed. Not only did the environment change, the word got around and a lot of people started coming there because they wanted to be somewhere where it was safe. This is a hospital for sinners. We're not perfect. Some of us need IVs. Some of us just need a Band-Aid. Some of us need CPR. <laughs> Sorry, the nurse just came out of me. Um, but you know what I'm talking about, don't you? We can be wheeled in here each Sabbath on a gurney needing the life and breath of God and sometimes we feel like we need to go to the trauma unit and I'm not talking about this church I'm saying as a whole that's just how we are we don't mean to but let's make a difference let's help people get off that gurney let's help them start walking let's help them get the life that they need and let it change us and change others but most of all when we spend time with our best friend Jesus, we're not going to have to even talk about it because it's just going to flow naturally from us. God loves you, and so do I. And um, let's have prayer together. And uh, I think we've got fellowship today. And I'm very excited about eating lunch with y'all today. This is, a, this is good. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you have called us your friend. What a high and awesome privilege we have. Let us not take that for granted. And let us use the words that you have spoken to us. Words of life. Let us use those and bless others. Let us build up and not tear down. Father, I just ask that we would allow you to convict and challenge us and to cultivate words that will be a blessing. We thank you that your presence is here with us and that you are continuing to linger on even after I am through speaking. I pray that you continue speaking to their heart. We ask that you bless the food that we're about to eat, that it would be nourishing and to our body and give us strength for your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you and hope you can stay by for lunch.